Hello everybody, my name is Kyle and today I'm setting up Trillium Next. This is a note-taking application that you can run right from your browser and as of the time of this recording this is my favorite note-taking app. If you're interested in seeing how I upgrade from Trillium or how to set up Trillium Next on its own, then come check it out. So in this video I get to do something a little bit different than what I normally do because I usually just show the install process for the application that I'm demoing. But this time I already have an instance of Trillium running which is the predecessor to Trillium Next. Uh, since Trillium went into maintenance mode and it's no longer being actively developed, it's been forked into Trillium Next. So I'm going to get to show the process of upgrading from Trillium to Trillium Next. Since it's a direct fork, this is really simple. It's just a matter of changing the Docker Compose file to pull the image from Trillium Next. So in order to showcase that, uh, right now you can see I've got Trillium running at the moment. I only put two notes on here, both for the Docker Compose files for Trillium and Trillium Next. And if you ignore all the comments on here, the only thing that's really changed is this line for the image. So I'm actually just going to copy this. And then I'm going to switch over to my terminal. And in here, I'm going to change that Docker Compose file. I will erase this image and I'll paste in the Trillium next one and then all I'm going to have to do is run docker compose up and that should change that image I didn't spell it correctly and that'll pull the new image and restart the container so I'll switch back to my browser here and then we'll refresh this page and you can see right in the headline here it's switched to Trillium Next. We're signed in. It looks like the uh, fonts have changed and you can see there's some contextual highlighting based off the code that's in here. So that's nice to see. There's already some updates. So that was a really quick and easy upgrade. Just something to keep in mind. It does say here in the notes on the Docker Compose file, which I just grabbed off of the Trillium Next GitHub, that you should use a tag number instead of latest. It says here that using latest may cause unintended upgrades to the container. That basically just means that if you update to a mid-version change, that it may break things, mostly likely to break syncing if you have your own server and a desktop app that's in sync. While I did start up this container with latest, I would not recommend that. Now, in order to find the latest version for Trillium Next, you should go to Docker Hub and in here just search for Trillium Next. This is the proper container. And if you look under tags, it's going to show you the latest versions. Right here, the latest version is v0.90.12. But above that, I see they've got a stable tag. And that's the one I'm going to use for this video. Typically, the stable tags are used for complete version upgrades. So switching from Trillium to Trillium Next was a quick and easy update. And it looks like it's working. The jump to notes seems to be working. The note map, yep, looks like it's working. Calendar, recent changes. So since this one looks like it's working, I'll show you the process of doing a fresh install. Typically, I like to show how to do a bare bones install, but in this video, I'm just gonna be doing a Docker Compose. So I've switched back to my terminal. I'll just clear the screen here. In order to do a fresh install, I'm going to run Docker Compose compose down 
And then I'll go up a directory, and then here I'm going to create a new directory called Trillium Next. I'll move into that directory, and then in here I'm going to create a compose.yaml file. Now if I switch to my browser, in my browser I'm on the Trillium Next GitHub page. And I'll scroll down. They've got a Docker Compose example file here. I'm just going to copy the raw file. I'll switch back to my terminal. And in here, I'm going to paste the contents of that. As I've said before, this is pretty much identical to the Trillium Docker Compose file. But it's got a lot more notes in here to make it understandable for people who are not too familiar with Docker. There's only two things I want to change in here because I've already got an app that's running on port 8080. I'm just going to change that to 8088. And down here in the volumes, I want to change this so that it will create a new directory inside this directory that the compose file is in. And that one will be called Trillium Data. Now with those two changes, this Docker compose file should be ready for me to use. So I'm going to write and quit, and then I'm going to run docker com compose up dash D. Now we should be able to see what a fresh install looks like. So I'll switch back to my browser, and in here I'm just going to refresh this page. It's asking us if we've already got an instance on a desktop or if we've already got a server instance. In either case, if you want to sync with another install, you would choose one of these two options. But since this is just a uh, standalone server, I'm going to click a new user and click next. So that took about a minute and now we got to set our password. So I'm going to enter in a password here. We'll set password and now we can sign in with that new password. Now this is actually one of the downsides of Trillium. This is just a single user application. So you can see that there is no user to, to sign in. If you've got multiple users that you want, you're going to have to set up multiple instances. So I'll just log in. Now if you're new to Trillium, I would recommend going through this demo. It gives you a whole bunch of examples of how you can use this. Examples of highlighting and code blocks, which is what I typically use this for. And math, journaling, tech. Go through it all. This will walk you through how to use the Trillium application. And it's all very simple to use. So just to give a quick demonstration of how I use Trillium, I'm going to create a new note. So I'll click on this plus sign here to create a new child note for the root. And let's say I want to create, I'll use an example that I've already shown, uh, docker compose file for Trillium next. Now the body of the notes typically follow markdown formatting if you're familiar with that. If you want to do a heading, you can do two pound signs and a space and then it will give you a header with an underline. So I will say the notes for my compose file. And with an enter, I go into the body of the note. This is the note content. And then I will do a code block. And to do that, you do three back ticks. If you're not familiar with the back tick, it's the key in North American keyboards that is basically just underneath the escape key. And after three back ticks, it automatically goes into a code block. So if I wanted to say sudo apt up, update, and to get out of the code block, you just hit enter three times. And I'll do another code block. And since I've got the Docker Compose file still in my clipboard, I can just paste it here. In order to make any changes to it, it's just what you see is what you get. You just 
move your cursor around and you can erase, type, modify, anything. So I'm just going to erase these comments. Oh, and you can see it's auto detected the type of code we've got but if it didn't find that correctly you can highlight your code block and in here choose whatever formatting it is so this is a shell script so I will change that to shell in here this is a YAML so I can choose YAML formatting just like that and you can see it shows what type of code is in the top right hand side. And to make things look more clear, I like to give the icon here. Let's see. Let's say I'm using a Docker instance or a Docker compose file. I would look for Docker in the code right there. And that changes the icon. What's brilliant is you can nest files in here however you like. So uh, I will choose a folder icon for this. And under this, I will call it parent note. Under here, you can create a child note. And you can create a child note too. And you could do as many arbitrarily long nested notes as you need. It's a brilliant process. I haven't even begun to cover even a little bit of what this thing can do. So you'd be better off going through this demo and it teaches you a whole lot that can be done in this. I use this for code primarily. Well, we've come to the point where our, this is how I'm gonna leave things for today. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section down below. I do my best to try and keep everything as clear as possible, but if I've failed, please let me know. In the meantime, my name is Kyle, and I'll see you in the next one.